Now I'm with uh, Connor Murray. Connor, first of all, congratulations on the lines. You must be delighted. Uh, absolutely over the moon. Jeez, it was um, it's a pretty nervy morning. You know, the, the morning of the announcement. Like we we all found out the exact same way on TV at eleven o'clock. Like like everyone else. So I was up about up about eight o'clock. You know, washing clothes and, and tidying the house, trying to trying to keep myself busy just just to pass the time. And you know, minutes were creeping by. You know, and I wasn't getting any closer to eleven. So. Um, it, was a, it was a long wait, but um, definitely worth it once once my, my name popped up. And the, did the lads congratulate you, the monster, monster lads, or did they give you a bit of a slag? Uh, they not only did, they did. Actually, we had the week we had the week off. Um, most of the lads who played against Claremont had the week off, so we, we were all at home, and most of the rest of the squad were in, um, in CIT watching it together. So as soon as it happened, you know, the, the phone started going and, and the text came flooding in, and, and most of the Munster lads obviously, obviously sent their, their best wishes and congratulations and well-deserved. I was reading Alan Quinlan's column there in, in, in the Irish Times there on Wednesday, and he said that the Lions is the ultimate honour for, for a player. Yeah, I, su- I suppose it is when you when you look at the the way it's selected. It's it's four countries. Um, I suppose you're picking the best players from those four countries, and and to be to be in a squad like that is is definitely a dream come true for me. You know, I've had my wildest dreams that I imagined this would happen maybe two and a half years ago when I when I first got my my first start with Monster. You know, it's it's been a bit of a a roller coaster ride, and it's um it's definitely enjoyable. You know, and it's just just brilliant. Because it only seems seems a very short time when I was congratulating you on being picked for Ireland. Yeah, it, it's kind of it, it reminds me of the way I was picked for the World Cup. But maybe maybe a bit of a shock. I know my name was probably mentioned a little bit during the year for Lions and and all sorts of things like that. But for the World Cup, it's kind of a similar way. You know, it's kind of a shock to me personally to get to get picked in such a squad. And when I was picked for the World Cup back then, it was. Not that I wasn't expecting it, but it was a bit of a surprise, you know, and it was just, it all came at me at once, you know, and it was it was a lot to take in. But with this, I suppose, you know, during the year, when any time you're interviewed, you're always asked, are you thinking about the lines, blah, blah, blah. And you are you have to answer by saying, you know, I'm thinking about the game this weekend. And you are, the majority of your thoughts are towards whatever game you're playing that weekend. But there's a, sl- there's a little bit in you that's that's wondering about the lines and, and your um how your competition's playing and, and how you're going to have to play at the weekend, you know, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> so, I mean, you're sitting here now in the Mixed Live 95 FM. When you were a lad in St. Munchens, did you ever envisage that you'd put, be putting on the red jersey of the Lions? Uh, I, I, probably not, you know. It's, it's it's a dream come true, you know. It's something that, you know, you, you watch all the tours growing up, you know. I remember in, being down in Derry Nan for the... Um, I think it was the 2001 tour, you know, and my dad was coming down and I was ringing him all week, you know, it was before the start of the tour and I was ringing him all week to make sure he bought the Lions jersey for me so I could wear it down there to watch the games and, and go to the beach and play a bit of rugby with the lads with the jersey on. So that, that's the stuff of, you know, dreams and, you know, just, I suppose it probably hasn't hit home completely yet, but it's it's definitely sinking in. Because when you look back in the history of the, of Limerick Lions, you'll, you'll see the names of Tom Clifford, Tom Reid, Tom Clifford, Clifford, of course, of Young Monster, Tom Reid of Gary Owen, mm. there was Mickey English of UL Bowes. Um, you could go on and on, and, and, and you know, Gordon Wood, the late Gordon Wood, Keith's dad, who's a yeah. lion as well, and then coming up to the present time, Keith Wood himself, of course, a lion, yeah. and now Paul O'Connell, and you, you follow in those footsteps. Yeah, so it's, it's weird hearing those names, and then you're, you're, you're next on, on that list, you know, and it's 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 a privilege and an honor to be even mentioned in the same sentence as some of those fellas, you know, and especially people like Paulie, who who you, I've looked up to all growing up, you know, playing rugby, and then for the last couple of years managed to to play with, you know, and and, and enjoying it unbelievably well, and and he's been an unbelievable influence on me, you know, he's he's such a leader, and you know, and you can really um you can really feed off him the way he trains and the way he approaches things, you know, he's a he's a real um good influencer. He, I mean, he just showed that, didn't he, in the Harlequins match? I never saw such an influence of one particular player on a game, Connor. Yeah, I think I think he was very good that day. You know, obviously along with a lot of other uh, other players, you know, but he he probably stood out a bit. I, the thing that for me was when he came back against Connacht, his first game back. You know, he was just back from injury and just the way he played and how 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 in um, good shape he looked and how well he influenced that game you know that was for me that was more impressive you know the way he just came back straight from injury and, and was up to speed if not um, a bit better than most other players on the pitch that day so that was that was very impressive and your, your last game uh, for, for Munster over there in France uh, in Montpellier is, has the disappointment sort of gone now from you? Um I don't think it will for a while, you know. Obviously, with the news during the week, um, 
kind of helps helps ease the pain a bit. But that's just purely personally. But as a team, I think people keep saying, you know, you've done well as a team this year and you've you've come a long way. But any time you start a season with Munster, the goal is to win the Heineken Cup. That's that's where we base ourselves. So obviously to lose a semi final and we were, I'd say, you know, if we had another few minutes on the clock, we we might have snuck snuck the win, you know. And we had a few chances there at the end that we that we didn't take. That probably will haunt us for a while, but. In saying that, I, I keep saying it to people, there's going to be huge belief in the squad next year, knowing that we've gone to England, beating the Premiership champions, Harlequins, and, and we've, we've gone to, to France to one of the best teams probably in world club rugby at the moment, you know, and we, we, we nearly snuck a win there. So I think we can only be confident going into next year, but there is obviously still disappointment in the air. There was a, a, a fellow playing outside you at number 10 jersey over there in, in Montpellier, uh, a former line as well, Ronan O'Gara, do you think that'll be the last time you'll you'll be playing with Ronan in, in um, the Munster jersey? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure if if he does decide to to hang up his boots, you know, no one can begrudge him that he's he's just a legend. You know, it, to to play with him was, was a dream. You know, he was the player that everyone kind of looked up to growing up. He was the the superstar when we were young. When we were we were we were just starting out playing rugby, but. Um, I don't know. I don't really know. He hasn't. He hasn't said it to any of us. But I'm sure it'll, it'll come out in the next, next few months. You know, it's up to him. I'm sure if he did stay on, he'd he'd have a, a lot still to give. But um, well, he's still at the top of his form, isn't he? He is. I, I after the Claremont game, you know that people were just chatting, and we were like, "Jesus, Raj played unbelievably well." And you know, he's had a tough year himself with with the way the way things went with Ireland, and you know, to come back from that mentally more than anything, he's just just shows how much of a strong character he is and how tough he actually is. Finally, Connor, what's the next step for you with the, with the lines now? What do you do? Where do you go? Um, geez, it was all up in the air when I when I first got the call. I wasn't even looking at texts or phone calls or emails or anything like that. But since it came down now, I've um, I've trawled through my emails and there's one or two from uh, Guy Richardson, the the manager, the the tour operator, and we're meeting up in London on the thirteenth of May for uh, I think a week of a week of training for those who, who aren't involved in Pro Twelve finals or, or European finals and then I think we get the weekend at home and then we're back up to Carton House where, where we train with Ireland. We're there for a week and then we're for, I think we're flying to Hong Kong and then, then we're really we're really getting going at starting. Yeah, so you'll be with uh, vying with Mike Phillips and mm. uh, Ben Youngs as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um played against um Phillips a couple of, I think three three times now you know and we've had had a good few battles you know and he's a player I I definitely look up to you know he's kind of similar scrum half to me size wise and and the way he plays so it'll be interesting to see him up close and see how he trains and how he approaches the game and and um, with Ben Youngs you know I I chatted to him after the England game this year you know he's obviously a a great scrum half you know real real dangerous breaker and really threatening you know and um, I'm interested to see how we get along together. You know, he's a, he's a lovely fella. I had a good chat with him after after the England England game this year. So looking forward to to meeting these people and and training with them. Okay, and we're looking forward to seeing you out there in the lines. Well done, Connor. Cheers. Thank you very much, then. Thank you.